Christ's message to us, if there is anyone who will hear, is utterly clear. It is of love. Love God, love your neighbour as yourself. He came to fulfil God's covenant with his chosen people, the Israelites, the Jews. So not to abolish the law, the law being what Moses brought down from the mountain, the Torah, the first five books in the Bible. He came to fulfil it. But his message is exclusively the only incident we know of any act of violence by Christ is the overturning of the moneylenders' tables in the temple, i.e. people were buying and selling in God's house, so that was desecrating God's house. Christ says, Every single hair of your man, fellow man, woman, child is precious and special. If they strike you on one cheek, give unto them the other cheek. So, this is now early Saturday morning, the 9th. of May 2020, I'm at St Albans, a town northwest of London, 18 minutes I think on the fast train to King's Cross or something, um, Hertfordshire, Ingerland, listening to the BBC News here now on Radio 4, and yesterday was VE Day. 75 years since the ending of the Second World War. Now, I've grown up in a generation without war in my personal life. I'm 63 years old, born in 1956. But, for what it's worth, my own father, I had older parents, fought on the Somme in the First World War, for the Royal Norfolks from King's Lynn, and then my mother's brothers, I've got half Scottish side, in their kilts in the Second World War, and mother's sister was in Palestine, as then was, assisting, driving 10, 20 ton trucks and whatever, I don't know. I myself was training as a pilot through the Royal Air Force too. I didn't go into it. But, as a Christian, as an older man now, I'm not old, I'm only 63. As a Christian, all I feel is rage. Rage at the humanity around me, which is still commemorating killing, basically. And holding it up is a good thing. My father left this country. That was his response. He went off and ran the railways and the, then was Ghana, the Gold Coast. My grandfather trained at... Mother's father trained at Guy's Hospital in London qualified in 1907. He left this England too. The narrative here in England is that basically when push comes to shove, killing is fine. That's appalling. It's not Tom and Jerry. The cartoon characters you know if old Tom gets a beating, he'll always get stitched back together again. Kids can cope with that. 
How does a young life reconcile within itself the world in which it lives? My own mother thought Churchill was the bee's knees. Basically, in my spirit, what I'm feeling is rage, actually. In my lifetime, there was the second war in Iraq. We, the West, America and Britain, Mr. Tony Blair, of my Prime Minister of this country, I never voted him in, obviously. I wouldn't dream of voting for him. Awful man. And Mr. George W. Bush of America slaughtered indiscriminately tens of thousands of innocent Iraqi citizens so we, the West, could have our oil. The narrative is that it's acceptable if push comes to shove, or if reasoning goes this way or that way, to kill indiscriminately innocent human beings. And it's rubbish! We did this bombing in Berlin. I think it was Berlin. Lancaster bombers. This great firestorm thing. commemorating our loved ones who died in the war. As it happens, I don't think I lost anyone in my family, actually. What about the Jews? What was all that about? Six million Jews? Slaughtered for what? By the Germans. I love the music of Beethoven. Beethoven was German. The only way to make any sense of the world in which one lives is to love God through Christ. There is no other way. And with love within one's heart, then all killing under all circumstances for any reason must stop. <laughs> the manufacture and sale of arms included, if I were Prime Minister, <laughs> no chance, I would close down British aerospace, boof, of course, people are going to use those arms, especially Saudi Arabia. I've got a medical background myself. So the Saudis have now got bigger and better arms to kill the people in Yemen. If you sell people, uh, no, if you manufacture arms, they're going to be sold to someone and used. I used to know a chap called Santony Wedgwood Ben, Tony Ben. He fought so hard from within government about this. The arms trade. And how wrong it is. I'm quite clear. I have no doubt... <coughs> in my spirit, that I, as a Christian, utterly reject the world in which I live, basically, and its evil ways, perpetrating the same evil. And it is evil. You cannot serve two masters. This is Christ speaking about money, actually, but you either serve God or money, the world. If you have the love of Christ within you, then killing has to stop. The reason I'm in St. Albans here is because he was the first martyr. It's the story. It may be a legend 
that he was converted by someone called Amphibolus in the early AD 200 and something, 50 or so, 1750 years ago, and as a Roman centurion, he said, no more killing, obviously the authorities, his Roman bosses, <coughs> wouldn't accept that, so he knew his fate, and he was martyred. And that act of Christian love still shines here in this dark world, here where I am now. I see the cathedral every day. I walk past it. Well, from a distance. Amen. The answer is love. There is no other way.